The warm Mediterranean breeze washed up the Adriatic Sea from the south. As Sigbjorn Eriksson and his fleet of longships prowled across the narrow ocean from the lands of Croatia to Sicily. His latest conquest for the Duchy of Ancona was already well underway. His Italian host, led by his brother Asbjorn, had already marched north and begun sieging the many fortresses. To his right stood his daughter Hersia. She had grown into a fine warrior, the finest of all his brood to be honest. She was much like his mother who she'd been named for, in looks and spirit. To his left, his second son Sven, still a boy but old enough that he could now go to war and learn from the many experienced warriors within Sigbjorn's ranks. Absent was his eldest son and heir, Ugbjorn. He had remained at home to hold the capital. It pained him to think of Ugbjorn ruling his kingdom after his death, carrying on his father's legacy. The legendary Viking conqueror's realm ruled by a fool. Sigbjorn loved his son as much as any father could, but he could not deny the fact that he was not fit to be a king. He inspired no loyalty. He was weak, sly, cruel, and uninterested in war and ruling. He knew his Jarls would never follow such a weakling, and could he honestly blame them? Unlike in the petty former Christian kingdoms of England and Francia, where men followed the son of a king no matter his faults and failures, the Norsemen followed strength. They prided themselves on it. It's what had allowed them to be so successful and made the prior so weak. If Sigbjorn was to fall in this war, his kingdom would fall with him. Maybe not straight away, maybe not in a year, but it would fall and his father's legacy with it. There was only one solution for it. Sigbjorn would gather his Jarls and inform them of his decision. He would look to his ancestors and their ancient customs. From this day forward, the men of Safirland would choose their own kings from the Eriksson dynasty. They would choose the most powerful and capable of his family, and his father's kingdom would continue to grow and flourish under their leadership. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Safirland, where we are once again at war with our biggest rivals, Italy. The crumbling kingdom of Italy, that is, which won't be Italy for much longer, I'm doubting, considering they are being invaded by us. Several of our vassals, the Byzantine Empire, the East Frankians, I believe, as well as, I've got a feeling, was it West Frankia, I think, as well, as well as two of their own vassals going against them. So, yeah, I don't think Italy's going to be around much longer. It is going to crumble. We're trying to take a bit of the spoils, at least getting one more duchy from them before it does inevitably collapse, and it might be a bit harder to gain land from them. We did take some of the Bulgarian land as well as we want to try and get everything south of this river to the Black Sea. Obviously not the Byzantine Empire, that may be a little bit hard, but I do want to get this last bit of Serbian land, which it does look like is under attack from somebody already, but I'm not sure who. Is it one of our vassals? Who is Serbia currently at war with? Okay, so Serbia is actually at war with one of our vassals who are trying to take that land. So that works perfectly for us. We're not even going to have to try and do that war ourselves, which is absolutely awesome. Now, whilst away from the episodes, I've been thinking about our current succession crisis that we do have on the horizon. Some of our realm is going to split away. I think Venice will become an independent kingdom. Thankfully, it's only a small area and we should be able to get it back pretty easily. But the main thing I'm worrying about on our succession is that our son, Ugbjorn, is completely useless. He's also a murderer, which gives people a massive, um, massively bad opinion of him. He hasn't had a son yet, which is one good thing to take from it. Hopefully, something may befall him before that. His wife's not pregnant either, which is good. It's, yeah, it's not great. He's probably the worst of our children. We do have two other sons. We have Sven, who's 14. Wow. Wow. And he's not overly impressive. He's decent in learning. He's not too bad. Uh, he'd be a better option than Ugbjorn, at least. And then we also have Sigbjorn, who's also not that overly impressive. He's okay, but not, not amazing. It's a shame that our daughter Herja cannot inherit, because she is by far and away the best of our children. Very decent warrior, just like Sigbjorn and Asbjorn before him. A decent um, leader as well, a decent blade master. Gregorus, she's brave. She would have been perfect. It's such a shame that she can't inherit instead. But what I've decided to do with that duchy that we've got, because we've got one too many duchies, is to grant it to her son, Sigbjorn. Um, so we will grant him the title, the chiefdom of Kapua, along with the Yaldum that comes with it. We'll pin him, as important, of course, because of that. 
and hopefully yeah he's he's not too bad he's pretty decent martial wise i think his mother was warding him anyway i'm pretty sure she was if she wasn't let's have a look martial wise we've got ourselves and then we've got his mother you know we'll go with ourselves let's Let's ward him for the final day, see if we can get him a little bit more impressive. But it's such a shame that we can't go through that line instead. But something I was thinking about, we've lost a council position, um, was I wondered if we could go with an elective succession. Obviously, it's very Norse to do that um, in the olden days where they'd vote for leaders and such. And that might be a good way to go, where every time a king dies... Um, all of the Jarls will vote for the member of the Eriksten dynasty that they wish to see upon the crown. And that, that could be good. It would ensure that we always get decent rulers. We need a new tax collector. You're pretty good, whoever you are. So let's assign you to that role. You don't look Norse, though. No, you're not. You're a Catholic Croatian. Can we demand you to convert? And yes, we can, which is perfect. Awesome. But yeah, we've not got great control over the natives either, which is something we need to work on before... Um, Sigbjorn does die just because of how pathetic some of our heirs are, which is annoying considering everyone else's heirs seem to be exceptional. But if we go on the faiths, we can see that um, Atatru is spreading fairly decently, especially in the um, Italian lands. Wow. But yeah, we are trying to spread that still, which will make things a little bit better. These are Catholics down here, which is annoying because Odin Riff was converted before, but now it's converted to Catholicism, which is not good. Um, culture wise, we're pretty much Norse. We've got the Serbians and the Bosnians in the mountains, as well as the Croatians, which isn't the worst. It's not too bad. We've got the Norse spreading over here as well. It's more the religion that we need to worry about. Um, and, yeah. So we do need to try and sort those things out. Where is our councillor currently trying to convert? Ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I remember now up here, which still needs converting. We are promoting culture as well, which is good. So we are working on things that needed working on. So that's all good. Let's unpause then and start carrying on our siege up here. To end this Italian war as quickly as possible, hopefully. Hopefully it won't drag on for too long. It's going to be a bit of a gruelling, stretched out war. Um, a, tar a faction targeters of peasant rabble has disbanded, which is good news. Not that it would have been much of an issue to put down, but we could do without it at present when we're trying to stabilise our realm. Um, we can call our ally into war, but I'm not going to do that. We can create several kingdoms, which we're also not going to do. We're in line to inherit two titles. The Yardum of Venice and the County of... Okay, yeah, so for actual the Venice lands, we could end up inheriting, which is pretty cool. Got a hell of a lot of lag all of a sudden. I do apologise. Ah, perfect. Our tax collector has converted to our faith. Greetings, my serene liege. We are happy to accept your proposed education agreement. A noble upbringing for a noble spirit. Excellent. Great news. And he is of our dynasty as well. Um, Speaking of our dynasty, actually, we've not actually looked at our dynasty tree, have we? So let's open the dynasty tree and see how that's actually shaping up. Well, here's Sigbjorn's dynasty tree. High Chiefess Freya of... Oh, yeah, who's married to the Lord of House Lynx. She's awesome. It's looking pretty good. Let's open it even further when we go to King Asbjorn. And, wow, it really has spread since King Asbjorn's time. It really, really has spread. Obviously, Sigbjorn's line, Asbjorn's line, which is spreading pretty nicely as well. Yeah, spreading really nicely. And that's about the daughters as well. So that's awesome. 41 living members, which is really cool as well. The dynasty is becoming quite noteworthy now. Who is this army here? That, okay, let's see. I think it's one of the Italian armies that are attacking their overlords, isn't it? And East Francia has been very broken. Denmark has talked to me, if you, if you remember from the last episode. It's awesome to see how well the Danes, well, the Norsemen are doing at present. It fits very well with what we're doing down in the Adriatic and the Mediterranean. In the North Sea, Dane law has been in force now in all of the British Isles, pretty much. Most of Ireland, all of Scotland, all of England. It's only Wales that remains independent and has actually been formed, which is awesome. Dane law's even got some land backing Norway. Sweden's still as impressive as ever, but it has got a bit smaller. Some Finland has got some land, and we've also got this big land here as well, Bajama land, which is pretty, pretty epic. Um, child benefits from spouse's tutelage, which is perfect. Your class has been swayed, which is also good, as we've been trying to sway him. And the duelist returns. Herja has finally returned from her tail with her tail tucked between her legs. 
The heedless girl has travelled across the realm and challenged vassal after vassal, only to lose every single duel. Oh god. After, embar after an embarrassing defeat at the hands of Duchess Amnesia, she finally seems to have learned her lesson. Can she even fight? No, not at all. So how the hell have you lost a duel to her? And she's become disfigured and wounded. Ouch, you embarrass me. Her daughter's called Herja as well, isn't it? But she's not a red-headed Herja. We have a blonde Herja. Same haircut that they all seem to have. A faction has been created against us, which is not good news. And that's a huge army to the north of us. We'll make sure we stay well out of that army's way. Let's continue our sieges. Ah, that has been sieged. Where can we can we get away with marching on to this back? No, we'll get into a battle if we do that, which we don't want to do. Are there any other baronies close by? No, only that one, really. So we don't want to get involved. They are now marching away, though. So once they march away, we can march onto that barony. We don't want to get into a needless battle for the sake of it and lose Norse lives. And we have managed to capture a duchess, Duchess Adriana of Anacona. Um, okay, she's nothing overly impressive. 30, you could take her as a concubine, but we won't do that. We'll ransom her away and get ourselves a little bit of gold for that. We can also negotiate an alliance with our grandson, Jarl Sigbjorn, so we will do that as well. We can usurp the kingdom of Serbia. Which is interesting. So that means that that land must have been taken by our vassal. Which it has. Awesome. I think we can also create a duchy for that as well. But we'll leave that for now. And we can also have a dynasty legacy available to us. We'll go with the warfare. Which adds prowess and knight effectiveness. I think it just matches what Haz Ericsson has done mainly so far. I think it matches us better. So we will stick with that. Both of these lands are now under siege. Can we march onto this barony without losing manpower? Yes, we can. Can we march onto this one without using manpower? No, we can't. So, um, we'll just march to here for now. And ransom accepted for 100 gold. Greetings, my serene liege. I'm honoured by your request, and I would be glad to call you an ally. Perfect. Um, we're saving that gold up, really. There's not a lot we can do with it at present. So, what we're going to do is to save it for when we do finally become feudal, which we more than likely will do in a generation or a couple of generations down the line maybe our son our grandson i don't think sigvion would do it yet i think he's still way too traditional viking and norseman to do that he he'd rather stay tribal for now i think that'd be more realistic to him so we'll leave that for now you know what we can create the duchy of Suramia, so we will do that let's create title perfect which gains us some prestige which we are in quite desperate need of we won't use the kingdom, though, because then we'll lose that after our death, which is not good. We don't want to do that. We will lose Venice, but that'll be about it for now. Um, ah, this is actually quite a decent stronghold, so it's going to take a little while to siege it. Can we march onto this land without losing manpower? No, we can't, so we'll stay where we are. Um, we can't get away with really marching onto any of these lands, then. How is our vassal doing in his war? against Italy at present. Oh, he's not at war with Italy anymore. Did he get his land that he wanted then? Doesn't look like he did, so I don't know what's happened there. Can we march our men over there? Yes, we can. And it doesn't look like we're going to get any penalties for doing that either, so we may as well start taking these land lands on our northern borders. Why not? If that can end the war that little bit quicker. How are Italy doing in their other wars, actually? The new queen of Italy, who is actually... She's French, but she is actually of our faith, which is interesting, so... Maybe after this war, when we've took this last bit of land, we could have an alliance with them in the future. Who knows? They're losing 80% in this war, and they're winning 80% in the war against the Duchy of Lombardy. Um, so they are winning against their vassals, so she is going to probably remain queen. But hopefully she will lose the war to us and to the other people. A person of interest to you, Jarl Kier of Spelito, died from the blue... Oh god, not the plague, not the bubonic plague. That is not... Ah, 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 he does not look in the best shape. So who is his son and heir? Jarl Holborn the second. Let's pin him. He's still too young to even see how he's going to develop. But that's not good if the plague's spreading around. Hopefully it's not spreading. No idea where he would have had it from, though. Not really sure how sickness is spread fully on CK3. I've not really ever seen it happen. Not CK2 style, anyway. These are our men. The men of Southheim that are raiding up there, aren't they? Yes, they are. So that's interesting. That so we've got some of our own men raiding. Um, do you know what? Let's um station proceed. Let's move the nine hundred men. 
let's not actually because that's going to take a massive penalty so let's just leave them together for now actually under our control and work on this siege while we're doing that though we'll concentrate on some other things um is there a way to check what else can we check we can check the development which is not overly great in our lands to be honest not yet it's still quite early days though isn't it so what else can we check not a lot really but Safir land is looking pretty nice now but as i said i'd like to get these other lands of bulgaria south of this river what is this river actually called um the danube 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 the river danube i'd like to take everything south of that river would put us in a pretty decent position we would be bordering the byzantine empire of course which would be a worry but we're bordering them anyway so if we could border all of their western northern border that is pretty decent to be fair there's a lot of land there to be had we are losing a lot of manpower in this siege though unfortunately so we do need to get this under control a little bit quicker and your acquaintance Hulborn died of the bubonic plague so that is spreading badly in their lands who is the new lord it's a lady Jarl Bjorg who is also only two years old let's pin her then it's going to be interesting to see what what's going to happen in Spolito if this plague starts spreading around like it is it's not great news at all I think they've got plenty of family members around around Safir land though so that the family isn't going to die out but it's not good a claim on Skopje. Um, for months, Theodotus, Count Leon's um, Shofarang ha Bishop, has been digging up spurious contracts and fabricated histories. Now Count Leon dares act as if it all amounts to a legitimate claim on the county of Skopje. Um, well, you can try and take it, but it's not going to end well for you, my friend. An acquaintance has been taken prisoner. We've taken some prisoners in the siege, though, as well as a great amount of wealth. Perfect. Who is this army here? Is it an enemy army? The army of Florence. No, it's the um, army that's actually attacking. Oh, no, okay. So, no, it is trying to... Do you know what, then? Let's go and take care of them, because they are trying to lift siege on lands that we're going against. Can we go and take this barony? Yes, we can. Perfect. All oh, right, okay. So, the Italian... Uh, okay, so the Italian land has split into Genoa and Italy, so they have lost one of their wars. Interesting. They're still defending against us. So we now have the king of the kingdom of Genoa, which is very, very interesting. He's Catholic. There are still some plots of Italy, but there's not a lot left of Italy, is there? Let's be honest. So let's just finish our war with Italy. And that's why we're not getting this land under siege up here anymore. So there's literally nothing of Italy left remaining, to be honest. So let's sail over to this bit to take that. And Duke Borrell has become your spymaster. He cannot be fired for 25 years. What? And we've had a victory in that battle, only losing 50 mine, 59 men and slaughtering 1,200. And we've got, wow, eight prisoners that can be ransomed. We'll keep hold of them till after the war. Um, okay, well, that's annoying that our spymaster has been replaced without our say-so. Who even is this? Duke Boril of Bulgaria, who is sterile. Not got any children, so he's going to die out anyway. Who's his heir, then? His sister. Oh, we'd get tyranny for imprisoning him, even though we would succeed. I don't want you as our um, spy master. I was quite happy with the spy master we already had. Then again, he has converted. We'll leave it as it is for now. But yeah, I'm not overly happy with that. I'd rather have Halfston still as our spy master, if I'm perfectly honest. Can we, if we sail out here, can we just sail up this river straight to the capital of Italy and take it that way? It probably work better in our favour to do that and just get this war over with that a little bit quicker. Um, adopt special succession type. Adopt special succession type. You may pick a form of traditional elective succession based on your culture. It will be applied to any of your top rank titles using petition succession. Let's think on the matter and see what actually happens. A question of succession. The question of who shall succeed me after my death has plagued me sincerely of late. Uh, ceaselessly of late, sorry. Uh, the threat of splitting the realm ever on my mind. Of course, while it is usually difficult to persuade the realm to accept a new order to the succession, it can be much easier to return to the old. The ancient ways of my people were the best. Uh, on second thoughts, petition is fairer. Kingdom of Safarland will gain Scandinavian elective succession. Norse, Swedish, Norwegian and Dane vassals gain 30% opinion of you for 20 years. Implemented traditional succession law. You know what it'd be quite interesting wouldn't it 
and I really do not want Ugbjorn to inherit. Let's do it. It's going to improve people's opinions of us. Your brother, Jarl Asbjorn, Asbjornsson of Latium, is your new player heir. See what I mean? And now I think that's much better. And your son, Ugbjorn Sigbjornsson Eriksson, is your new player heir. So it changed. Yeah, let's see what we can do with that. It could be quite interesting. So Ugbjorn's still our heir at present. But if we look now on the realm, we should be able to look at our succession. Um, when you die, you will play as your player heir. View election. An election for title heir. Who should we cast? There's 49 candidates. So I wonder who should we vote for? I'm, I'm going to vote. Hmm. Let's vote for someone really good. We have got Jarl Asby on. He's pretty decent. Diplomacy. We've got Chieftain Loki, who's pretty decent. Stewardship. Chieftain Ivar. High Chiefess Freya. Our daughter. Hmm. I'm not sure who I'd vote for, to be honest. My rank. Who is the highest countess? It will be interesting this way to see, though, what happens. And we'll play as whoever succeeds and gets voted in. It would be really interesting. Let's sail our armies up to Italy and siege the capital. Task finished. Slovenia has um, converted to Norse faith, which is good. Um, primary heir of the wrong dynasty. Yeah, but they're not going to be our primary heir, are they? So let's let's behave. Um, nominate successor. Let's have a look. Who has got the most votes so far? You. How have you managed to get those many votes? That's ridiculous. We will vote for Jarl Asbjorn for now. Which will put him, I imagine, in the lead. Yes, it is. Perfect. We'll vote for him for now. We do not want a Croatian getting it. That would be absolutely ridiculous. But at least now we're sieging the capital of Italy as soon as our armies land. No, we want to go for the barony of Italy. And end this war a little bit quicker. Sven comes of age. I'm proud to see my son no longer as a child but as an adult with sufficient tutelage even a child that has displayed little natural inclination towards scholarship such as Sven can come to truly understand any subject. His understanding of the, um, philosoph philosophical and theoretical works is impressive and he is often engaged in debate with his former teachers. Even at such a young age he can be heard quoting obscure passages to support new ideas and theories. Queen Halla con Queen Halla's contributions towards Sven's education cannot go unmentioned. Her lessons have given Sven valuable knowledge for his future life. They grow up fast. He's a mastermind philosopher. Awesome. Really awesome. That's great that he's done that. Who was he betrothed to? Ah, an intelligent person. Or even better. Even better. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with our son. A scheme at court. My spy master has come to me with grave news. While we do not yet know who, someone is plotting to kill our courtier margareta someone is always plotting to kill her i think it was matt in the discord actually made a meme about it that's how ridiculous and out of hand those plots have now got and they can now wed so let's get that wedding underway and hopefully he can start having some intelligent heirs maybe he could get elected as a new king and we could start going down a different path a more learned viking society that could be interesting but we need to get that siege underway in italy we need to get this siege down here how's our siege doing down here soon gonna collapse which is good what other issues do we have? We've still got all those um, prisoners to be ransomed. Active election in Kingdom of Saphirland. Jarl Asbjorn is still winning, which is perfect. I'm happy with that. We could go... I'm quite intrigued by Sven now, to be honest. Um... We're going to get a lot of money from those ransoms once this war is done, which is awesome as well. Italy is trying to lift that siege, which is annoying, but if we can take the capital, it's not going to matter anyway, is it? So, four months remaining on that. Do you know what? Let's station besiegers, and we can also get this other barony under siege at the same time, just to get us that extra bit of war score. And the barony to the south has fallen in um, Barre. So now, if we go over to this bit of land, get that under siege, we've managed to capture some more valuable prisoners... Let's just get the capital here under siege, and that will win us the war. We've got nine prisoners now. Uh, my wife, Queen Haller, is once again absent from our chambers as night falls. She has been distant lately, lost in fort, and rarely seen a court. Oh, not this again. Am I not to her satisfaction? Is she simply busy, or could she be warming someone else's bed? Um, 
let's get her watched this time then because last time we confronted her and she swore that she hadn't done anything and we upset her by doing that so let's just have her watched and see what we find out Let's put our spy master to work and make use of him. We don't really use our spy master much at present, do we? So it'll be interesting to actually get him doing something and see what we can take from that. And we have captured the Queen's High Almanar and her Priestess as well, which we managed to get some good war score through for. Still not enough to win the war, unfortunately. But we can now sail our army out there. We'll wait for the other host to come with it. And then we'll go down and fight the actual Italian army. Education at an end. My ward, Jarl Sigbjorn, has come of age and it's time he has left my care. For the longest time, I was hoping that good tutelage would be enough to teach Sigbjorn the intricacies of warfare. I was naive. He has only developed a basic understanding of the subject, but at least he has learned the essentials of managing an army. I can only hope that the rest will come with experience. Until we meet again, Sigbjorn, he becomes a tough soldier and an unyielding defender. It's not too bad, to be honest. His marshal could have come out better, but it could have been worse. Could have been could have been much worse. Our glory is widely known. We've gained level of fame. We've took some more prisoners in our siege, so we'll sail our army back down here. We're at 84%, so we're so so very close now. And our councillor Radulf Ah has died. He was awesome as well. He was actually an amazing, amazing soldier. So that is a shame. He was actually our marshal as well, so we are gonna need a new marshal now. So let's look into that and see who we have got. Hopefully we've got someone half decent. Uh, we've got our brother Jarl Asbjorn, but we have Duke Alexander Rasputin as well. Let's go for him. Let's get him a job on the council. And we'll get him to control, uh, improve control in, hmm, over here in Varbus. Let's try and improve our control on the mainland first of all. Someone else, yet again, is plotting against Margareta. What what a surprise. We have imprisoned him. But now we need to bring our armies down to finish off what is left of Italy. We need to meet the Italians in battle, I think, to maybe finish off this war. We're at 84%, so we don't need much now. We can get our main host together here, combine them together, and then land here to get that back under siege. Your class is not swayed. You will make another attempt. Hopefully we can sway him a little bit more. How goes the siege down here? Taking quite a while because it's quite a strong fort, which is a shame, but we can work on that. Let's land our host here. How many men do we have? 2,680. Will that be enough to defeat the Queen's army? Maybe. Defending the hills, better commanders, higher quality, but she... Hmm, it'll be interesting to see how we do. We are fighting against a duchess at present, though, but we are slaughtering her army, so it's no problem. Our champion, Yale II, ripped the head off someone and became a berserker, which is awesome. We've unlocked another military perk, yet again. Um, we'll go for, hmm, levy reinforcements, yes, definitely. Try and improve that slightly. We may not now be able to march, to be honest, onto the uh, queen, because we've just lost quite a bit of manpower from that. Drained some manpower from us. Do you know what? Let's just go for it. Let's march on to the Italian host. I think we can beat them. We're even in numbers, but how many times have we been outnumbered and had a great victory? I think we can take a victory here. We've got defensive buildings, better army commanders, and yeah, they're fleeing, so they know. She knows that we are more powerful. We are going to catch them in time, hopefully. Then again, it looks like we're going to capture that hostile army instead. But we'll be able to catch... The, no, we've captured the Italian host. Perfect. They do outnumber us slightly because they've had some hosts turn up. Our champion, Duke Alexandra, has killed Hendre de Saint. Um, we've gained the wounded trait, which is not good. Um, you were wounded by King... Okay, by the King of Italy. But hopefully we are going to win this battle. And hopefully that will give us the 90% war score all we need. Our champion, Jarl Bjorn II, ripped the head off somebody and became a berserker. We're dying, which is not good. But we have slain the Italian host. And that's given us 100% because we've managed to capture several valuable hostages. So let's end that war and disband our troops. Enforce demands. Done. Perfect. Greetings, King Sigbjorn of Safirland. Blessing upon you and your house. You are a much greater foe than I imagined. In order to enter this bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. So be it. Disband all of our men. There we go. We took that county that we needed. I think we're probably going to die soon. 
Um, we've got two Tartars that can be usurped, the Duchy of Anacona, so we will usurp that for ourselves, which is going to give us too many duchies that we're now going to have to sort out. Um, we've got ten prisoners that we can ransom. Do you know what? We'll actually have an in-depth look at our prisoners instead. We have got that duchy to give out as well. Let's have a look at who our many prisoners are. At 14 prisoners. Wow. So we've got this Italian guy here who cannot be ransomed. He's nothing overly impressive, so he will be executed. We have this guy here who's also nothing impressive, so he will be executed. We have you who are nothing impressive, but you can be ransomed for 10 gold, which is nice. Um, we have you, who is nothing impressive, so you will be executed, my dear. You're Croatian, but you are of our faith. Um, we can negotiate a release. We could recruit you. You've got decent learning, and you are of our... Yeah, why not? We'll recruit you. We've got a princess of Italy, which is interesting. 35. Hmm. May keep hold of you for now. What could we ransom you for? 50 gold. I think we'll keep hold of you for now. We've got Countess, who we will ransom because we can get a nice 25 gold for you. We've got you, who is no one of importance. We might be able to get a bit of gold. We can get 10 gold for you. I bet you're, someone's already considering our proposal. Let's let things tick along then, just so we can get some of those ransoms out of the way. And then we'll sort the other prisoners out. Got you. Who are you? You're stupid or slow. That's what that chicken means, isn't it? Yeah, stupid. We can ransom you for 10 gold. We can ransom you, but someone's already waiting for a proposal. We can ransom you, but someone's waiting. Most of them are from the same place by the looks of it, then. Got a count here that we can ransom for a lot of gold. We'll look at the temple art in a second. Let's ransom you as well, then, for 50 gold. Now we're going to have to get rid of this before... We can actually finish the ransom as low. I am spending time at a local temple, one which I haven't been to in a while. As I enter, I stand in awe at the interior's beauty. While it is not the largest house of worship, whoever built and decorated it was very clever with the limited resources they had. The artwork is sublime, the walls and pl uh, walls a pleasant glowing colour, and sunlight filters through the windows from outside in such a way that it literally looks like there is a stairway to the heavens. This shows the um, indomitable strength of the Astrotrue Way. I wish my house had an impressive room like this. Segment. No, we'll go for the first option. Who are you? You're only 25, but you've got the delicate trait, so there's no point taking you as a concubine, so we will just ransom you off instead. Earning an insane amount of gold through doing this. You can only get two gold for you. Unfortunately, one of the guys doesn't have a um, lot of money. He can't afford any of the ransom, so we'll keep hold of all those prisoners for ourselves for now then. Wow. Look at this guy. What's with that chin? Wow. Oh, he's a giant. <laughs> um, while performing his duties as my spy master, Duke Borrell has uncovered a secret held by my vassal, Mayor Rethel. Of all manner of vile things, he satisfies his hunger with human flesh. Could there be anything more sickening and deranged? Is he, he's a cannibal. He hasn't got cannibal here. Oh, foul humanity. Will you never cease to disgust me? Interesting. Um, is there anyone else we can ransom? We can ransom you for 10 gold, so we will. Can't get anything for you at present. Um, can we get anything for you? Yep, yeah, we should be able to ransom you for 10 gold, so we will. We've got the princess still, who we can ransom for 50 gold, so we will. We've got you, who we can ransom for 10 gold. So it's just this young prisoner here that we are unable to ransom at present because they don't have enough gold to do so so we'll do you know what we'll negotiate release can we demand his conversion yeah let's do that instead start converting some of those italian lords and heirs to the true faith right what else do we have loads of wars the duchies that we hold too many of that we will sort out so there's not really much else for us to sort out in that way oh we've got a war going on over here bulgaria they are defending against Count Cullin in the war against the tyranny of Duke Borrell. That's fine. I hope he loses. He's actually winning that, unfortunately. But hopefully, hopefully it may go the other way. Because I don't want him as our spy master. It would be good to get him replaced and get one of our 
Norsemen back in charge. But wow, Italy is Italy's a mess. It really is. But um, we will end this episode here. It looks like we are going to die. We're wounded and dying. Our heir is still Jarl Asbjorn, though, which is pretty cool. I'd be happy to play as Jarl Asbjorn afterwards. I wouldn't mind that in the slightest. But yes, we will end the episode here, guys. So thank you all so much for watching, as always. I hope you've enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and comment down below, and I'll see you all very soon for the next episode.